Welcome to the Mentor Podcast, where the most highly motivated entrepreneurs come to get their weekly dose of financial stability with host Ron LeGrand, as well as other nationally recognized thought leaders who will teach you how to get, grow, and protect your wealth. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another issue of the Mentor Podcast, designed to help you make more money, make it faster, keep more of it, and enjoy life better. I have a very special guest online today. He and I go back to 1800 and something or something. <laughs> uh, his name is Bob Leonetti. And uh, he is one of the very few remaining living paper experts. Uh, I'm going to let him define paper, but he and I used to teach a three-day event called Paper Power. And we're going to do that again, except we're going to do it virtually. So First one I called on would be Bob Leonetti, and you're about to see why. In fact, you're about to see how you can make money with the little-known industry hidden within real estate called paper that very few people know anything about, yet it's a multi-billion dollar industry and has been for as long as I can remember. In fact, I'm going to get Bob to tell you a story about a hotel he just acquired by buying the note on the hotel. So welcome, Bob. Hi, Ron. How you doing, man? It's good to see you. I'm good, man. I'm good. I don't remember the last, I don't, I don't remember when you and I actually first met. Do you? At your age, I doubt it. And it's at my age. Could I remember that far back? Um, yeah. I, I'll tell you, the first time that you and I actually sat down together was at LAX. And it was with two other people. It was with your partner at the time and my partner at the time. No kidding. And remember, Sean and Jamie were sitting there with us. Hmm. And uh, you and I were... Um, squared off like two male cats barking territory trying to figure out if each if the other guy knew about paper and when we at the end of the meeting we decided we both knew about paper and we've had a great relationship ever since all right well why don't you tell everybody what we mean by paper folks what i mean about paper is any time that there is a loan that's made on a property we refer to that as paper and so what happens is let's say that uh, even if a lender a lender loans somebody some money and they loan them a hundred thousand dollars and the lender has now a receivable that's $100,000. That we call a note or an evidence mm-hmm. of the debt. That's the paper. And mm-hmm. that paper can be sold in the secondary market. So a lot of times banks sell paper. What Ron and I are talking about uh, in a lot of our series is privately held paper. That's where you ask the seller to do owner financing. And when the seller does owner financing, then you give the seller a note. And that paper now is a tradable asset for the seller. He can either trade it or sell it or do whatever he wants with it, but it's a receivable for him. So when we trade those notes, those IOUs, that's how we call that paper. And it includes the note itself. It also includes the collateral for the note, which in most cases is either a deed of trust or a mortgage. All right. You know what? Before I go any further, I want them to hear about your background. Where do you come from? Um, Wow. Gosh, Uh, I was born on the West Coast. No, my background uh, has been in paper for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, prior to that, I waited tables. I was in the restaurant business. I got into real estate. I, I was going to make my gazillions of dollars and retire early in real estate and uh, bought a real estate course from Mark Harrelson years and years and years ago <laughs> called How to Awaken the Financial Genius. Remember that? Long oh, time ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I got hooked, and then I was a seminar junkie, and then I became a seminar junkie on the other end because I was volunteering at seminars. And uh, one thing led to another, and I finally got into the paper business. And uh, life hasn't been the same since. My life, not only in buying and selling paper, mm-hmm. but also as a real estate investor because now I understand paper. And when you understand the financing, there's a lot more deals that you can do. Okay. Now, there is what I call pretty paper, which is loans that are current. Correct. And then what I call ugly paper, which are loans that are in default. Correct. And then there are liens and judgments, which are attached to real estate. Right. Each a multi-billion dollar industry within itself. And then, of course, there are liens and judgments that are not attached to anything another multi-billion dollar industry, but we're not going there today. So how do I make money in the pretty paper? How do you go buy a note that's current and make any money on it? Well, it's kind of like wholesaling a property, Ron. Um, People who are getting small payments over a period of time oftentimes would prefer cash, but they haven't been able to get cash for one reason or another. And so, but they have this asset where they're receiving payments. They can sell that asset and you just position yourself in the middle like a broker. And you contact these people, and we show you how to do that in our course. 
Um, you contact the people, you find out what they need, and then you find a buyer like me um, or someone else in the industry, and we'll tell you what we'll pay for it. And you go back and you just put your profit in there and um, offer them at a reduced price. Now, what you're saying is that payment stretched out over several years are nowhere near worth as much as cash today having to do with the time value of money. And anybody who buys a note is going to buy it at a discount to give them a yield they would like to have or beyond. Can you quickly explain what the hell I just said? Sure. And, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you win, let's say you win a lottery. And let's say that you win, just for grands, let's say you win a um, million dollars a year for the next 30 years. That's $30 million. Well, you have to wait those entire 30 years to get those that $30 million. Mm -hmm. If you tell the lottery commission you want your winnings right now, they're going to mm -hmm. say, well, hey, we've got to discount that back. And we're only going to give you about $16 million on that. And you're thinking, well, what's more important to me? I have a million a year for the next 30 years, or do I want $16 million now to go buy a boat and take all of Ron LeGrand's courses and go to Europe and do all those things? So what it is is cash today is worth more than cash is in the future. It, it takes, um, if you want to buy a dozen eggs, it takes you a lot less money to buy a dozen eggs 15, 20 years ago than it does to buy a dozen eggs today. All right. That's brief enough. So really what you, um, what you just said is, matter of fact, nobody buys notes at face value, period. Exactly. So um, anybody with any real business, any kind of investment savvy could take that $16 million and make a whole lot more over 30 years. And they Absolutely. get that cash. So it's frankly, in my opinion, it's the only smart move. Of course, everybody's not investment savvy, are they? All right, let's, let's move over to the ugly house paper. I mean, ugly paper. What is it? I love, I love ugly paper. I have to tell you, and I learned it the hard way. Uh, when I was a lender back in the old days, we ended up with a bunch of non-performing paper, which means that people were not making payments. And we had to sell the paper. I was really shocked at the time when I was brand new to the business. We had to sell it at a discount. And I eventually learned that because the risk was greater, the investor was willing to pay less for it. And then I found out that I wasn't the only banker that was in that situation. There were a lot of bankers in that situation. And then I find out that there's a lot of private sellers in the same boat. And so what happens is they run the risk of not being able to collect a dime. You come in and you offer them substantially less than the face value of the note. They're at least getting some money versus no money. And they don't have to go through foreclosure. So I love ugly paper. In fact, the hotel I'm sitting in, we bought with ugly paper. So a couple of years, well, a couple of years ago, uh, we were working with a, a lawyer out of Florida and uh, there was a bank that was trading hands and they, uh, the commission was saying, look, you got to get rid of your bad assets. And one of the banks had bad assets that they had to get rid of. Um, they had a $1.7 million note on a, a hotel in the middle of nowhere, Texas, uh, Sweetwater, this is where I am right the second. And uh, we were able to negotiate to buy that note. Now, the guy was slow paying, and they knew he was going to default on it, but it was slow paying at the time. We were able to negotiate a purchase price of a million dollars. So, with, in other words, we came to the table with a million bucks and immediately inherited uh, a receivable of 1.7. So, if we foreclosed that day, the guy owed us $1.7 million. Secured by the property. Secured by the property. And the property at the time had an appraisal on of $3.1 million. Okay. Well, even if we discounted this thing down, we're still coming out good. Yeah. So you bought the note, then you closed on the hotel. We did. You own the hotel. Correct. For a million bucks. Yes. And now, but it was in terrible condition, right? Absolutely. So you went and now you're turning it around. Right. Stabilizing it with the intent of selling it off. Right? Correct. Um, you know, three or four million dollars or whatever it's worth at that time, correct? Right. And we'll be into it for about 1.35 hard cost mm -hmm. and then the cost of funds and everything like that. We'll be into it about 1.6. Okay. So whatever's left so over or up beyond that is. It'll take you three, four years to get out of it, but you should net at least a couple million dollars in the process. Right. It gives you some place to go because you're there right now. <laughs> now, one of us. Hey, honey, let's go spend the weekend in the hotel. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I was thinking, boy, what a bad time to buy a hotel. Bro. Oh, I, I got to tell you, I was not planning on this. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Neither was we. All right. So ugly, ugly paper just simply means it's in default. Therefore, Correct. it's going to be sold at a very, very, very deep discount. Absolutely. And in fact, the first liens will sell at less of a discount than second liens. Uh, I've been buying second liens. I bought a lot of them, actually, over the years for, frankly, 10 cents on the dollar as to what they're worth. I um, haven't bought a first lien for that yet, but you know, if one comes along, I'll snatch it up. Uh, what's your average? Uh, this probably is too much to, for you to know, but what, what would your average percentage of the face value of the note would you say you're paying? Boy, it depends on, on market. Depends on the markability of the property. It depends on a lot of things. But I'm going to say, yeah, for instance, I'm going to pay more for default to note in, say, Southern California that's got a hot real estate market right now rather mm-hmm. than I would here in Texas. So I like to get in at roughly 50 to 65 cents tops mm-hmm. for me personally. Um, there are rare occasions when I'll go higher than that. It just depends on the value of the property and how quickly yeah. I can move it. On the uh, commercial deals, you're buying them mostly from institutions on the residential. Absolutely. Right. We bought this with individuals, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So where do you get the money to pay a million dollars for a note on a hotel? We called you. No, I'm kidding. Um, actually, we work with private investors. Okay. These are the same investors that make private loans on the property. Most any investor that makes a private loan would 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 use the note for collateral instead of the real estate and make this absolutely loan, especially with collateral like that, which is something that I teach but I haven't actually mentioned in quite a while because I quit teaching private lending a few years ago. So you are also the expert on buying notes shortly after they're created. You still doing that? I love that. I still love that. You know, if people could just understand, I'm just watching a, a thing that I, I recorded a couple of years ago on bifurcations. And, and I, was, I still love that, where people can create a note um, and we teach them how to create a note in class, you and I do, uh, that ultimately is for sale. So, um, All right. Well, let me explain that, and then I'm going to let you come back and explain sure. it. We sell a house for $300,000 with owner financing. We get a decent down payment, at least 10%. Now we take back a note for 270. Now we decide we want to cash out of the way instead of holding on and collecting payments over years. Or maybe we have to cash out of the note to pay an underlying loan or whatever. Bob is in the bank as an exit strategy that you may use to cash out of that note. Because most people have no idea I can sell that note that I just created by selling my property with owner financing and get cash out of it. Take it from there. Yeah. So Rod said you had a $300,000 note, 10% down. You've got a $270,000 note on a $300,000 property. Um, we would buy that note. Now, I will caution you that if it's not seasoned, in other words, there's very few payments, if any, being paid on it. Um, what I would suggest, and we'll teach you how to do this in class, is I would suggest that you create a first for sale and a very small second for cash flow. And that way you can maximize out what your investor is going to pay and you can still keep some money for cash flow. What you're saying is you're only going to pay somewhere around 90 to 93% of that $270,000 note. I'm actually saying more than that, Ron. I'm saying that because it's an unseasoned note, yeah. the most am I going to do on my investment to value on an unseasoned note, 75 to 80%. Okay. So what is it seasoned? And what is it? What if it's seasoned? And what does that mean? Okay. So in other words, if it's a brand spanking new note, we're going to pay 80 cents. 80% of the value of the property. So the most we would pay for that note would be eight times three. We would pay $240,000 for the note. Okay. $240,000 for a two seventy five notes, pretty big discount. All right. Let's stop there and let them catch up. Okay. All right. Um, we got the two seventy note. Closing is over. All right. But simultaneously, if we want to, can't we? Sure. Right. Hey, you can actually buy it at closing. In order to sell a 270 note, though, you're not going to exceed 80% of the value of the property, which is $240,000. Correct. Yeah, they have a choice of either giving away that $30,000 or creating a second mortgage on it for the thirty dollars that they keep 
and you buy the 240 note. Correct. That's Actually, right. we'll buy the 240 at a small at a discount anyway, but we'll still pay 91, 92 cents on the dollar for it. Yeah. So you're you're it's, you're still better off by splitting it like into a 245 mm-hmm. first and a whatever this difference is on the second, a thirty-five thousand mm-hmm. dollar second. And we're going to attempt to teach that in class, aren't we, Bob? Well, you know what? It's easier to teach that when you've got an hour or two for that particular <laughs> technique than you do for five minutes on a blog. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's about as easy as teaching uh, algebra, I think. So anyway, <laughs> you got to do them right, or you're going to take a big hit. And in so other words, you got to structure the one you're going to sell to Bob right, or you're going to take a big whopping discount. You know, I do I, that all the time. I laugh. I get people who've never taken a course and who come with a note that's structured totally incorrectly yeah. and they're appalled at what I'm going to pay for it. And I said, well, if you consulted me first and structured it different, I could pay more. <laughs> and yeah. uh, right. so anyway, you got to learn what you're doing. Okay. So let's give them some hints on what structuring it incorrectly can uh, mean and what it would cost them. Well, for instance, let's let's take that same example. We've got a a 90% first lien note, and you don't know that I'm capping out at at, uh, 75 or 80%. And so you're thinking, well, Bob's going to pay 90, 95 cents in the dollar. Yeah. And instead, I come in and say, look, I'll give you 235 or I'll give you 240 for that note. Yeah. And you're thinking, well, but I've got a $265,000 underlying lien. Yeah, so I can't do anything. You're just like the bank. You're not going to exceed the investment to value, regardless of the size of the note. Exactly. Exactly. Because if you loan too much, your investment to value ratio is so high, you're at extreme risk. Okay. Exactly. Because if the deal goes bad and we've got a discount and sell it off, we're yeah. going to lose. Okay. However, it's all about the payments, isn't it? And your yield. Can you attempt to explain how you go about deciding what you pay for a note based on your you. It, it depends on what my bills are that morning. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. So interest is what people pay. Interest uh, is what the the payer pays. So if you go out and you you buy or let's say you create a note, you're the payer. You might decide you're going to pay. I don't know seven percent interest just for off the top of my head. Okay. Mm-hmm. If I come in and buy that note and I'm not buying it at par or like Ron said, I'm not going to give you face value for it. If I buy that note, it's going to be at a higher yield. In other words, my investors are going to want a return on their money that's higher than the interest rate you're paying. Mm -hmm. And seven, I want a return of eight. And so I'm going to pay less than the face value of the note in order to bump my return to 8%. So what that means is in class, we're going to teach a calculator class and show them how to take that little simple calculator and figure out what the present value of that note is today based on an 8% return rather than the 7% rate they sold it at or, or less. Right. That, that means it's worth less to get a higher rate of return. Correct. All right. If they could get their head around that, that would make it easier well, you know what, Ron? I think, and and I, I'm probably jumping the gun here, but when we get to the end of this, you would ask me to do a little something, and I'm going to do a little something with my calculator course. You mean today? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let me think. We got pretty. We got ugly. Now, really, what you can do though is open up a whole new avenue of exit strategies for people by selling off that note. Now, of course, I'm going to do everything I can to keep them from selling you the note, Bob. You understand that from previous I do, right? <laughs> okay. Because, frankly, you don't want to sell this note unless you have to sell this note. I mean, just know that the bank is waiting to buy it there. It's called Bank Leonetti. But why give up a discount if you don't have to give up the discount? On the other hand, suppose you got a bank calling the loan due. Or suppose you got, I don't know, whatever else can happen that you really need to get this loan, underlying loan paid off. Because by the way, Bob, when you buy that loan, it's going to be a wraparound mortgage most likely, right? Right. Correct. Uh, So before the seller gets a nickel by selling off that note, you're going to pay off the underlying debt and they get whatever. (laughs) Right. So that moves that wraparound mortgage into first position because we did pay off the underlying debt. Which is one reason why a lot of people sell off the notes. 
Right, right. Because they got, let's say they got a hard money loan due or the, or they're on the underlying. Yeah, that's, whatever good. It is. that's a good point. That's a very yep. good point. Yep. Yeah. So I went out and I borrowed money from a hard money lender and I got a, a one year balloon on it and, or two year right. balloon on it and I need to get underlying paid off for the seller's sake. Okay, so uh, isn't it true that the higher the payment and the shorter the term, the more the note is worth? Yes. Well, yeah, because the shorter the term, what it does, it drives the payment up. Quicker you get back the money. The quicker we get back the money. Right. Yeah. And so whether you can raise interest to get your payment up or you can shorten the term yeah. to get payment up. Which, and the sooner we get our money back, the more the note's worth. Yeah. Which raising interest would probably take you out of the market. Uh, sure. So you just shorten the, you just shorten the term on it. Yeah. But you still have to raise the payment as high as you can get the buyer to accept. Exactly. Exactly. And we'll show you how to do that in class because there's a way to back into that. Okay. All right. Do you say, uh, do you want to use an example on calculator? Is that what you want to do? No, 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 no. But I do have a little calculator uh, uh, course that I would be willing to uh, part with. Oh, okay. I got it. Uh, uh, by the way, I wonder what percentage of real estate investors have any idea how to use that calculator. <laughs> I got to tell you, I know a lot of real estate agents who couldn't know how to use a calculator if their life oh, depended on it. Oh, man. <laughs> And these are supposed professionals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. All right. So tell me about that course, which frankly, anyway. you know what we, uh, Jamie and I wrote a course uh, a while back and um, we found that anybody who takes our class and anybody who's in real estate in period needs to understand the financing. And so what I did is I put together a short course on how to use a financial calculator. Uh, it's a very easy course. I've just rewritten it so that, um, you don't have to actually go out and buy the calculator. A lot of folks today are using a, their app on their phone. And uh, so I've just rewritten the course with a picture of the app so that you can just go out and use the app on it. And I would be, uh, so anyway, that's what the course is. It's uh, Today, calculators are free. I, we're just looking here in my drawer somewhere. I've got an HP 12C that I paid $150 for. I was going to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, the free calculators are not the ones you get wrong from you when you open an account at the bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, the, everybody has to have an understanding. we got a whole section built. We're going to actually give them a test on how to do that in class, uh, on how to use that calculator. It's not hard, but it's hard when you don't know how to use it. But Sure, uh, sure. Critical because you got to be able to figure out what the payments are, what the present value is, uh, what the term is, and all of that. Anytime you're structuring a note to sell a property or anytime you're getting ready to buy a note, by the way, um, they don't have to buy the notes, they can just uh, find them and send them to you, right? Right, yeah, they're like they say they're acting like wholesalers. That's what you do, that's what I do. I buy, I buy notes, yeah, I and buy notes. Sure. Of course, it's also a good investment for your IRA or any other investment capital you want to get out as long as you know what you're doing. And if you don't, you're going to soon know. But yeah, one of the things I love in class, I mean, you know, there's a lot of ways to make money in real estate, as you know, and, and there's short term and there's long term. And a lot of people play the game for the long term, which I love, as do you. You know, you're going to get the payments over a long period of time, put it in your mm -hmm. IRA, get good returns. Uh, some of you would prefer just to get some quick cash and go do something else. I get that as well. We'll show you how to do both of the things in, in class. Okay. Uh, but I also do a, a section on investing personally um, where you can go with your IRA and I'll show you uh, this little teaser, but I'll show you in class how you can actually lower your risk and raise your return at the same time. Yeah. I love that. Blew me away when I first heard that. Yep. Yep. By the way, we keep talking about this class. You got the dates handy there? I don't. Um, I think it's October 20. It's either 5th, 6th, 7th, 7th, and 8th. October 27 and 28. Okay. And uh, you go right down below and you can get uh, signed up for it. You do not want to miss this class. This, like, this class could mean a fortune. It could change your whole direction in real estate business like it did yours. Huh, Bob? Yeah, I did. It, uh, when I finally understood paper, I was blown away and my real estate investing just completely changed. Yeah. So you said you had a, a calculator course. What about it? I, well, you know, um, Debbie had asked me if I had a course that I could include as a little bonus for the folks that signed up. And I'd be more than happy to include the calculator course. Um, we could just uh, email it to them and when they sign up for the, for the class or whatever, get them started and kind of as a little bonus that, uh, you know, they could appreciate and also get them prepared for the course. 
All right. So uh, that link is down below too, I guess. So, well, actually go to the mentor podcast.com forward slash, forward slash paper. Right. The, the mentor, mentor podcast. podcast.com forward slash paper. Pick up this mm-hmm. sign up for this event. Before, by the way, we can only put 1000 people on this event. Now I'm not kidding. We broadcast this over five uh, different, uh, what do you call it? Something stream. Uh, anyway, and we only put a thousand people on it. Uh, and we can only work eight hours a day to like cut us off. It's too bad. Ian, but... Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And for the sake of the West Coasters, we're going to start a little later in the day than nine o'clock. So you don't have to be up at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, so anyway, all the information will be on the link. Well, this thing is getting close to an end. So um, any parting words you want to tell our listeners uh, before? we? I, I, I mean, yeah. we, I've got 25 years invested in this business. And Ron's got probably more than that because we're both dinosaurs. You know, I'm in my 39th year, for God's sake. Are you really? 39th year doing this. Wow. Uh, Lee. I'm trying to think of when I got started, and it was 1992. Oh, you're 29 years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not that old, though, Ron. (laughs) Well, I'm not commenting on that. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> all right so anyway, by the way guys i gotta tell you you cannot find real estate without finding paper absolutely faulted and some not and you're going to learn all the ways to find this paper and then what to do step by step uh and probably sell off a few notes to bob and maybe along the way you can start keeping them for yourself the yields on this stuff is going to blow you away i <laughs> mean blow you away especially when you start learning how to buy for your own portfolio you are absolutely going to be amazed yeah that's what i mean all right sir well i appreciate you taking the time with us today good to see you again it's good to see you too ron all right and, and by the way just for the world to know i do not dye my hair just let you know ron <laughs> I, I, I uh i bugged him about that i said where the hell your gray hair i still don't believe him <laughs> The last time, thementorpodcast.com forward slash paper. That's right. You guys take Thank care. Thank you, sir. We wish All you right. the best. Thanks, Ron. It's good to see Thanks you Thanks, everybody, for watching. See you soon on the next The Mentor Podcast. That's all for this edition of The Mentor Podcast. To connect with Ron and learn how you can attain financial freedom, as well as up-to-date strategies to grow and protect your wealth based on today's discussion, go to www.connectwiththementor.com.